The showroom was all chrome and shine, like a giant mirror reflecting the fancy cars parked inside. The salesmen, all slicked back hair and pearly white smiles, talked about the cars with practiced enthusiasm, their words sounding more like memorized scripts than genuine passion. Marco, however, stood out like a sore thumb. He wasn't built for fancy. His work boots stomped a trail of dirt across the polished floor, and grease stained his hands like permanent tattoos. His hair wouldn't stay put, wild and free like a stray dog. But unlike the other guys, Marco understood engines. He could listen to their coughs and sputters, diagnose their problems like a doctor, and fix them with calloused fingers that moved with the grace of a pianist. Yet, in this world where appearances held more weight than skills, he remained an invisible man. The other salesmen, with their expensive suits and practice charm, were the golden boys, constantly praised and promoted. Marco, despite consistently exceeding expectations, remained stuck in the repair bay, his talent buried beneath layers of grease and overlooked potential. One scorching summer day, the usual showroom chatter was shattered by a sound that sent shivers down everyone's spine, the sputtering death rattle of an engine. It belonged to the showroom's crown jewel, a sleek silver Ferrari owned by a big wig named Mr. Kensington. The air crackled with nervous energy as Mr. Kensington stormed out of his car, his face redder than a stop sign. The salesmen swarmed around the dead Ferrari like confused bees, their sales talk failing them miserably against the stubborn engine. They knew how to sell, not fix, their knowledge limited to horsepower and sleek designs. Mr. Kensington's frustrated yells echoed through the showroom, drowned out only by the ticking of the cooling engine. From the back of the repair bay, where he was carefully taking apart an old car, Marco watched the drama unfold. A spark of challenge flickered in his eyes. He knew these fancy cars, knew them better than any brochure or sales pitch. These weren't just expensive toys, they were intricate puzzles, symphonies of metal and oil that spoke a language only he understood. Marco didn't care about the surprised looks he got from his co-workers. He just walked right up to the fancy Ferrari, his old boots leaving marks on the shiny floor. He wasn't there to show off or make a sale. He just wanted to fix the car, that's what he did best. In that moment, the guy who always got dirty under the hood became the real master mechanic, ready to show everyone that the most important thing wasn't how you looked, but what you could actually do. The room exploded. Mr. Kensington, his face as red as the Ferrari, boomed. This is outrageous! His voice bounced around like a tennis ball gone wild, making the showroom floor vibrate. The polished salesman, used to smooth talk and smiles, fluttered around the dead car like confused chickens. They knew cars like they knew poems, all fancy words, and no fixing. Marco, though, wasn't part of the chaos. In the back, elbows deep in an old engine, he barely heard the yelling. He was like a conductor, waiting for the orchestra to quiet down before starting his own tune. He saw the challenge, a spark lighting up his eyes. He wasn't built for this place, his worn boots scuffing the floor and his greasy clothes clashing with the shiny surroundings. But under his rough exterior, he understood engines, a language only he spoke fluently. Ignoring the surprised stares, Marco walked towards the Ferrari, quiet confidence in every step. He wasn't there to show off, just to fix the car. That's what he did best. He knelt down, silencing the room with his focus. Like a doctor, he examined the engine, his ears listening to the car's whispers. He didn't need fancy machines, just his years of experience and a sharp mind. Time flew as Marco checked every inch, his brow furrowed in concentration. He was a detective, looking for the culprit. Every click and clack was a clue leading him closer. The room held its breath, watching the grease-stained mechanic work. Finally, a grin spread across Marco's face. He found the problem. A tiny sensor, hidden from everyone else, was causing all the trouble. A small gremlin messing with the car's smooth running. A silent promise formed in his mind. He'd get the engine singing again. With a roll of his sleeves, Marco opened his toolbox, a worn friend filled with more than just tools. He knew exactly what he needed his movements quick and sure as he grabbed the right part. The only sound was the clinking of metal as he replaced the faulty sensor. His grease-stained hands moved like a surgeon's, fixing the car's broken rhythm. 
He worked for what felt like forever, putting everything back together. He wasn't just fixing a car. He was proving something. Real value wasn't in how you looked, but in what you could actually do. With a final tightening of a bolt, he stood up wiping his hands on his greasy overalls. He didn't look at the crowd, just at the car. The challenge was met, the engine ready to come back to life. With a practiced flick of his wrist, Marco plugged the charger into the Ferrari and flipped the switch. The room held its breath. A tense silence stretched on, thick enough to cut with a knife, broken only by the nervous coughs of the salesman. Then, a miracle, the engine sputtered to life, a low purr filling the air like a familiar song forgotten and then remembered. A collective sigh of relief swept through the room, the tension dissipating like a deflating balloon. Mr. Kensington, his face now the color of a healthy peach, stared at the revived car in disbelief. He slowly turned to Marco, his initial fury replaced by a flicker of something new, genuine, heartfelt respect. You did it, he said, his voice gruff, but laced with a sincere appreciation that he couldn't quite hide. I thought for sure I was leaving my baby stranded here. Marco simply nodded wiping his greasy hands on his overalls. He wasn't one for grand speeches or empty compliments. He just liked fixing things, and the satisfied purr of the engine, a sound akin to a grateful sigh, was all the reward he needed. The atmosphere in the showroom shifted subtly, like the changing of seasons. The salesman, who had previously dismissed Marco as just another grease monkey, now looked at him with a newfound respect. The air crackled with a quiet hum of admiration, a silent acknowledgement of his skill that spoke volumes more than any words could. But despite the change in atmosphere, there were no immediate promotions or fanfare. Marco, ever the pragmatist, simply returned to his repair bay, the familiar comfort of grease and metal welcoming him back like an old friend. He knew his worth wasn't measured by titles or fancy speeches, but by the quiet satisfaction of a job well done. He went about his work with renewed focus, the memory of Mr. Kensington's gratitude, a spark of warmth in his heart. He knew that true recognition often came from the people you least expect it from, and that the quiet satisfaction of a job well done was often worth more than any outward praise. As Mr. Kensington's words hung in the air, a small smile played on Marco's lips. It wasn't a show-off kind of smile, more like a warm feeling spreading through him like sunshine. He wasn't used to people thanking him, especially someone important like Mr. Kensington. Usually, Mr. Kensington got respect, not the other way around. But today, things were different. Marco, the mechanic with grease under his nails, had fixed the fancy car, and Mr. Kensington's simple thank you meant more to him than any trophy. Marco didn't care about fancy titles or becoming a big shot. He didn't need his name on a fancy sign or his face on a giant poster. For him, the real prize was the quiet feeling of knowing he'd done a good job. He liked taking something broken and making it work again, like bringing the music back to the engine with his own hands. And seeing the relief and thanks on Mr. Kensington's face, that was all the proof he needed that he'd done something important. A few weeks later, Mr. Kensington, impressed by Marco's skill and work ethic, couldn't stop talking about him to his friends. One of those friends owned a different garage, a place that valued talent over shiny shoes. He heard about Marco and decided to see for himself. He watched Marco work, saw the magic in his hands, and knew he had to have him on his team. So Marco made a move. He left the fancy showroom behind and started working at the new garage. He got a raise, better benefits, and most importantly the respect he deserved. He was still the same Marco, the quiet hero with grease under his nails. The change in scenery also brought about unexpected friendships. The mechanics at the new garage were more like a tight-knit family than colleagues. They shared stories, traded tips, and laughed about the quirks of the trade. Marco found himself surrounded by people who appreciated the essence of the craft, just like he did. The grease stains on his overalls were badges of honor, symbols of hard work and dedication that resonated with his newfound peers. Over time, Marco's impact went beyond fixing engines. His passion for his work became contagious, inspiring others to look beyond the surface 
and appreciate the beauty of a well-tuned machine. The new garage, once a hidden gem, gained a reputation for its exceptional service and skilled mechanics, with Marco at the forefront. One day, as Marco was elbow deep in another engine, Mr. Kensington paid an unexpected visit. The silver Ferrari purred like a contented cat, a testament to Marco's prowess. Mr. Kensington didn't say much. A nod of acknowledgement and a firm handshake were enough. In the end, Marco didn't need a spotlight. He just needed the steady hum of engines and the quiet nod of approval from those who truly understood. And so, with each car he fixed, Marco wrote his own story, a narrative of resilience, skill, and the triumph of substance in a world often blinded by style.